And on that soft note over there, but we're going to start, we're going to get over here first. What's that? Girl, what is that? Oh, yeah. Oh. So we need to have a little conversation about the Supreme Court out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a hearing recently. And this is the hearing right here. This is the hearing. We're going to play the audio for you all. My girl Joy Ann Reed uh, covered this story the other day on The Read Out. Her show is called The Read Out. It's on M MSNBC. And for those who may not know about the Tulsa massacre, the Tulsa race massacre, it is one of those instances where black people did. Yeah, that's the first one, then the next one. Um, this is one of those examples of where black folks pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. This, this city was self-contained. This community was self-contained. It was uh, millionaires, doctors, attorneys, professionals, teachers, whatever. It was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and some white vigilantes came through and burned the town down. Oh. Because they were progressive. But also, that's, that, that's not unique. Like, the same thing happened in um, Redwood, Florida. Uh, Rosewood. I, Rosewood. Rosewood. Uh, Central Park in New York was a black city, black town. They didn't build the park on it. We already know about uh, Lake Lanier. Lake Lanier yep. was a black town, and they didn't flooded that. You want to play it? Go ahead. Today, the last two survivors of the 1921 Tulsa race massacre made a final plea before the Oklahoma Supreme Court. The lawyers for Ms. Viola Fletcher and Lessie Benningfield Randall, also known as Mother Randall, who are both 109 years old, are asking the court for the opportunity to continue their quest for equitable relief for the survivors of the massacre. More than 100 years ago, in 1921, a violent white mob besieged, looted, and That's destroyed the, last thing the Greenwood do. District of Tulsa, a thriving African-American enclave also known as Black Wall Street. The white rioters torched more than 1,000 homes and destroyed churches, schools, and ransacked businesses. 35 city blocks were burned to the ground, leaving survivors to pick through the rubble of their homes and businesses with absolutely no help or sympathy to rebuild their lives. This case has been winding its That's way terrible. through the courts for years. And back in July, to high school, I knew about the Trail of Tears. I knew why Chief Pleasant Porter wanted prohibition in the Constitution, but Greenwood was never mentioned. And so I, I think regardless of what happens, that you're all to be commended for making sure that that will never happen again, that it will be in the history books. Wow, that was one of the nine members of Oklahoma Supreme Court in a stunning moment of honesty. And while it's unclear what that court will do when it comes to the survivors of the 1921 Tulsa race massacre, Justice Yvonne Cowger noted that they have changed the course of history. What comes next is still unwritten. Joining me now is Demario Solomon Simmons, the attorney representing the Tulsa race massacre survivors and the founder of Justice for Greenwood. Uh, Demario, uh, my jaw dropped hearing that, um, that in Oklahoma, people don't even know this massacre happened. How stunned were you to hear that justice say that? So like the last survivors, they were like in the, like 100 years old. Um, they faced the Supreme Court trying to get some sort of justice, some sort of a compensation. And this is the thing that really agitates me. It's like the American government can always figure out how to compensate every other group of people, Except us. but can't figure out. And like th this justice, you just heard her say, I didn't even know about this. In the history books, I heard about the Trail of Tears. The Trail of Tears, of course, is when white folks put indigenous people off of their land. Yeah. And the Trail of Tears is them leaving. It's, you from know, the, I think from from leaving from, yeah. Right. yeah. And they did the same thing to the Chinese in the 1800s. Yeah, that's true. And we know what they did with black folks. And so it's like they're trying to rule on what should be done, how they should be compensated. Because these people, their, their, their livelihood and generate I mean, they were traumatized. Everything that they built was taken from them. And from what I understand, it's been denied. They've been denied. But this is why it's important when we talk about voting. This is why it's important when we talk about um, what's happening in Florida, where they're trying to remove history like this from the history books. And part of it is because white folks don't want us to know 
just how menacing and evil they were. Were? Okay, are? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I still see some things going on today. Now, again, it's not everybody. Right. right for those right. who are going to say, well, it's not all white people. We know. We know. But we're talking about the ones that are. Um. So yeah, so like uh, like that movie, I mean that TV show, Lovecraft Country. That was kind of a play on it. Remember when um, they went through and they burned? Did y'all watch that? When they went through and they burned up that uh, that neighborhood? Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. kind of a play on what had happened there. Um, but this has happened in so many different, excuse me, cities across this country. That's not. They also said Regina King's uh, show Watchmen. Yeah. Also touched on it. Also. They were they were intentionally trying to destroy future generations of. Um, but of I wealth. knew. Well, me and G was talking about. We knew that the Watchmen wasn't coming back after they did certain things in that movie. Mm -hmm. Oh. Really? In that show. In that show. Yeah, like to transfer Regina King all the power, for, uh, you know. Like reclaiming power as a black woman mm -hmm. and making her a god, right? Nah, they're not, they're not. At that show, and just like Lovecraft Country wasn't, we knew it wasn't coming back. I was real surprised about. Lovecraft I wasn't. Really? I wasn't surprised. It was. It was too black. It was so good though. And it was. And it and like the people wanted to see that show come back. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, a lot of people wanted that show to come back. Uh, somebody saying, "Can we talk about uh, Tyrese asking for a public apology from the president because?" Well, first of all, you got to understand that ignorance is just exactly what it is. I wouldn't expect Tyrese to, to know anything about how, um, you know, how the seasons fall and how Easter is. But, but that, that it's been that day for the past, what, 19 years? Yeah, the, it just happened to fall on Easter, Easter this year. Yeah, because yeah, so, Easter is not a specific day. Right. Correct. And so, you know, I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't expect a lot of the color folks to be so outraged about anything that they have anything to do with the trans girls or anybody, anything that's a faggotron. I wouldn't expect for them to know anything about nothing except them, the, except them feeling that their rights are so they're so played and being infringed on it. Something is being taken away from them because somebody else is being acknowledged. Tyrese owes us all an apology for all that crying and carrying on he did on social media. Because he wanted that, his daughter back? No, that wasn't all of it. <laughs> he, he, he needed to go lay his ass on somebody's couch and get mental health. Girl, and let's be clear, all of it is pagan holidays. And especially Christmas. Yeah. Especially Easter. That too. So I don't really even want to give that them children no energy. What I want to give energy to, and we need to go ahead on and um, get ready to get out here. My manager, Legra Colin, today oh. has rang the bell. Has she ever talked about this? Well, oh, I know she night. posted it, but I'm just saying. Today, Legra has rang the bell. Today, my girl has taken her last chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy. My, she was going to rung the bell. Today was the last day that she had to take chemotherapy. Congratulations, Liz. Honey, she done got out of out of this year, over a year and a half journey of her battling cancer. There's a lot of stuff that we didn't talk about. Because when did that when did it happen? When did she first tell us? What was going on with us at that time? Something was going on. I don't know. I was real crying about it. I was very emotional about it. You know, I had to keep mm -hmm. it together and mm -hmm. be quiet about it because I didn't, you know, want people to know all of the things that was going on, mm -hmm. you know, and then there were people writing on the thing. Somebody wrote yesterday. I, I don't know if they were trying to be shady, but they was like, oh, well, you mentioned Legra. I haven't seen Legra in a while. Like, you know, you know how what people give like, oh, girl, they ain't seen us, so we got to be beefing or right. something, you know, and not knowing that people be having real life shit going on, going on you yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm looking at the video. She crying right here. Yeah. But, you know, she... um. She rung the bell. Yeah. There she go, ringing the bell. Rang it, Lagra. So here's the thing. When she first... <laughs> I really wish I could have put the video up here. But it's a, it's the boys posted it. Yeah, she's ringing the bell. I'm so glad. You know, it's been a lot of stuff that's been going on. Honey, she got all these cakes and pies and cookies. She's cancer free. When she Hi y'all about Shata. Hi Shata do. Yeah. I went over there. Um, I, I went over there when she first told us, and we went grocery shopping so I could help her. You know. Yeah. 
really kind of like clear out her her cabinets and I gave her a bunch of juice recipes like I juice every morning and like a lot of times if you follow my Instagram a lot of days I will post my juices the ones that I make um, on my Insta story and I'll put like the recipe for it a lot of that I started doing more because she asked me to share more recipes with her. So oh, right. I went over there with her. We went to the grocery store. We went and got vegan mayo and just really trying to remove a lot of the dairy from her house and just different things like that. And just giving her, um, you know, some alternatives and things to eat and that kind of thing. So I'm glad to hear that. Yes. It's, and, you know, it's today she rang. We're going to have a motherfucking party when we come when I come back home from... Um, Jersey. 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 We're going to have a motherfucking party, honey. We're going to party down. And that's which, my which girl. Which house we have party in that? Hers. <laughs> yeah. But let me just say this since we're talking about that. And, and, and cancer is it's not just about, I believe that it's, it's connected to our diet, but it's not just about what you're eating. It's also about the products that we use and we put on our skin because mm -hmm. your skin is porous. Yeah. So like the stuff that you come, that, that you put on your skin, you know, it seeps into your skin and it can also cause things to go on in your body as well. So be mindful of that. Like, I, like my shower gels are vegan. My deodorants are vegan. Um, you see my deodorant vegan too. You can use is it vegan. It. Is it really vegan? It is. It is. It's lum lum aluminum free. Yeah. Lumane. Oh, okay. Mo, where did you put this thing? On the like I, I try it's to a, stay away from aluminum deodorants right, and things right like that. And... That's why I don't feel it. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It's, it's, in, it's invisible. Yeah. It, it wasn't oh. touched your skin. It, it I can see it. Oh, you what you talking about? The thing? Her pack. Oh. Mm -hmm. My mama just tell me telling me to say something about Lincoln Regular Bill. Mama, you late I already did, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, please, if y'all get some time, make sure y'all follow Allegra, Allegra Official. That's L-E-G-G-R-A mm -hmm. official on Instagram. Y'all follow Lego. Y'all go give her, give her some, you know, give her some love. Show her some love, you know, and and just, you know, it's a, just amazing that she's beat cancer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like y'all, y'all make sure y'all do that, okay? Yeah. You know, uh, and we love you for that. 